Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu Plötzlich Digital, die Sprechstunde mit einem Special aus Athen. Ich bin Aris von D3 So geht Digital und wir sind heute in der griechischen Hauptstadt zu Gast. Ich freue mich riesig, heute mit euch hier zu sein. Wir sind bei Edition Nummer 35 mittlerweile und haben heute etwas Besonderes mit euch vor. Und zwar besuchen wir GeForce, die Open Technology Alliance, die 37 Organisationen aus ganz Griechenland aus dem akademischen Vertritt und Open-Source-Technologie beflügelt. Ähm, wir hatten ein paar technische Schwierigkeiten, beziehungsweise die Attika-Region, zu der auch Athen gehört, wurde von äh, einer Überschwemmung getroffen, von starken Regenfällen. Und deshalb haben wir ein bisschen umdisponiert und machen es jetzt äh, quasi per Livestream aus Athen, aber aus zwei verschiedenen Orten. Ähm, und da wir heute eine internationale Ausgabe haben, werde ich jetzt auch gleich ins Englische wechseln äh, und freue mich riesig auf den Austausch. Ähm, wir zeichnen diese Episode natürlich wie immer auf, deshalb äh, läuft gerade auch schon die Aufzeichnung. Vielleicht noch der Hinweis zum Chat für diejenigen, die äh, genau als deutschsprachige Teilnehmer hier teilnehmen, nutzt ihr immer den Chat, um mit uns zu kommunizieren. Ihr könnt auch auf Facebook und auf unserer Website kommentieren und seid dann quasi mit euren Fragen live im Webinar dabei, die beantworten wir dann. Ähm, und äh, wenn ihr im Zoom-Call dabei seid, dann äh, nutzt bitte die Möglichkeit, an alle zu versenden. Das ist immer ganz wichtig. Und ich äh, weise euch auch noch mal auf unsere anderen Angebote hin. Ähm, wenn ihr Fragen habt, äh, genau, meldet euch via Chat. Und falls ihr die nächsten Episoden äh, der Sprechstunde mitbestimmen wollt oder eure Anregungen loswerden wollt, habt ihr auch noch mal die Links zu unserem Slack-Kanal. Tretet da gerne bei. So, uh, that was the German part. Let's switch to English. Um, I'm really happy to welcome Kostas Papadimas uh, from GeForce today here in our really special edition of Plötzlich Digital, die Sprechstunde. Hello, Kostas. Good morning to everyone, to everybody. Hello, Aris. Hi. Um, it, is, it is a first for us um, to have an international exchange on this format, but I'm really happy that we have G as, uh, with GeForce a very special organization. Um, What we have planned for today, Kostas, is that you start off with, represent, with presenting the work of GeForce, then we'll talk a bit about the e-learning, and then dig into the questions, maybe, hopefully, also from you, from our community. Right? Right, great. I will start the, uh, a little bit with presenting the, what GeForce is about, and then uh, discussing about the learning, and uh, then uh, discuss about openness in general, and uh, any questions that our, our, the audience has. So Perfect. I'm Kostas Papadimas, as uh, uh, already presented. Uh, I'm from GFOS. GFOS stands from a Greek free open source software society and uh, Open Technologies Alliance. Uh, as you can see on the below of our screen, this is uh, the sign, the CC by SA, which uh, represents that uh, what, what uh, GFOS is trying to do. A CC by SA is a Creative Commons license uh, uh, that. Uh, It's an open license that uh, tries to uh, promote uh, open code and, and open code and knowledge uh, freely, to be freely available and uh, for anyone to use it and reuse it and uh, share it. So, what GeForce is? We are uh, a nonprofit organization established in 2008. Our members are 30 universities and research centers, Greek universities. Uh, our uh, shareholders, our members, so the universities are our shareholders. We have a board of directors with uh, nine members from the universities. We have a scientific committee, about 27 members, and eight working groups, which uh, are from Bollywood years, about 300 members uh, from all over Greece. Uh, we are partners of uh, Free Software Foundation Europe, Open Forum Europe, uh, Creative Commons Network, Open Policy Network, Open Government Partnership. Open Data Institute, Open Policy Network, community associations, and a, a, a few more organizations, international organizations. Our main objective, our main objectives promote openness in the, the Greek educational system, in the Greek public administration, and in business in general. Uh, how are we doing? We are, we are trying to raise public awareness about the benefits of using and development of open technologies by providing reliable and timely information regarding free software and open technologies, both in Greece and internationally. And we are doing policy advocacy a lot of, uh, lot of times for the use of open technologies in public administration by monitoring legislation, participating, participating in public consultations, and providing uh, policy on papers. 
uh, how we are doing by coordinating the efforts of the Greek groups of volunteers, communities, we are an umbrella organization and try to uh, bring uh, all the different uh, communities and uh, developers together about a common, some common cause, and they will determine uh, to form the backbone of Greek, uh, Greek free open source, uh, source code movement. We're supporting of the development and promotion of open technologies, uh, and business models. We are participating in open government initiatives in Greece internationally and promoting the and implementing open technologies, uh, technology projects. Some of our initiatives is uh, on open soft software, on open content, on open standards, open data, and open government, and privacy and digital rights. For example, uh, uh, in open source software, we are uh, developing uh, a lot of uh, open source applications in collaboration with the uh, Greek community and uh, Greek developers. Uh, we expand in the world translating for the, the, in order to be useful to business in, to the public sector in the educational community. Actually, during the last uh, five years, more than 30, uh, 40 uh, open source projects were, have been localized and developed uh, uh, with uh, the collaboration of GFOS in order to be available to Greek uh, students or uh, Greek uh, businesses and the Greek public. We are uh, also part of a Google Summer of Code uh, project. Uh, so through Google Summer of Code, uh, we are uh, uh, in collaboration with Google Summer of Code, we are funding uh, students uh, during the summers in order to uh, work on some uh, some open source uh, projects uh, that we are choosing uh, in order to be useful to the Greek educational community. Actually, during the previous uh, three years, uh, our, uh, we are contributing more than uh, to 26 uh, open source projects. And in this year, we are uh, uh, added uh, 10 more. So we are very good to say about 35 uh, open source projects funded through Google and uh, through GFOS. All the projects, of course, are open source, are available uh, uh, at uh, GitHub and uh, our uh, and the Google Summer of Code uh, uh, repositories. We are quite good in Orson. We have been doing a lot of uh, free open source uh, conferences and workshops. Uh, GFOS participates uh, because it organizes every year uh, several conferences. Uh, with the Greek and foreign speakers. The force organizes uh, a yearly, in a yearly basis, Mood, Mood, uh, the Mood, Mood Conference. Mood, Mood is a, a conference about uh, the learning management uh, systems, Mood, uh, uh, which, which actually is uh, used for e-learning. We are going to talk uh, about this later. Uh, the Syndix uh, conference, which uh, STEM, uh, uh, it's for STEM in educational system. And the uh, great, the big uh, FOSCOM conferences, which uh, organ uh, which is about the free open source uh, software code in Greece and internationally. And of course, we're organizing a lot of workshops and uh, webinars uh, on different uh, themes of uh, open source technologies. Uh, we are uh, doing uh, trying to promote uh, open source software to education with a lot of uh, ways. Uh, through collaboration with uh, educators and uh, teachers uh, from the primary and secondary schools and through academics in the tertiary education in Greece. So we are uh, uh, creating a registry of open source software that uh, is used already in Greek education and trying to promote uh, them to the other schools and other uh, uh, universities. Some of our projects uh, are uh, uh, educational programs from uh, refugees and uh, in order to introduce them to, to STEM and to, to teach them to mix classes with Greek youth in order to be co collaborate together. We are doing a lot of uh, hacking uh, activities uh, through the uh, classrooms, uh, through the schools in order to work with 3D printers, Arduino, Raspberry Pi and uh, all the open hardware that is related with uh, uh, creating a STEM. Also, we are uh, doing uh, uh, some uh, open schools programs that uh, we are trying to uh, teach students and uh, parents and uh, educators about open educational resources, uh, open source about Wikipedia, Linux. And uh, one of the, our big uh, um, uh, initiatives is the open source uh, uh, technologies uh, competition in schools that uh, about 200 schools every year are participating. Uh, we are funding schools, Greek schools, in order to experiment with open source uh, software and open source hardware and produce some, um, some uh, open hardware projects. 
actually we have uh, some 3D printers that uh, we are distributing in Greek schools in order to be uh, 3D printing to be more available and to customize themselves with uh, 3D printers. Uh, we are trying to make some maker spaces uh, in uh, some schools through uh, funding in order to have uh, some uh, labs with 3D printers that have been on Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. Uh, okay, the Open School Programs was a program that uh, we are collaborating with the Municipality of Athens. Uh, so we can organize a series of courses for 3D printing, uh, open educational resources, uh, etc. in several schools in Athens. Uh, the hacker spaces, uh, we are trying to uh, build and, uh, some, hacker, some uh, hacker spaces inside schools in order to have uh, some open uh, hardware through, with 3D printers, uh, Linux, uh, and uh, Arduino and Raspberry Pi. Actually, we are running a, a project uh, this, uh, after these uh, days to uh, try to redistribute uh, laptops uh, in order to some companies and people that uh, have some uh, lap spare laptops or uh, buy a new laptop in order to reuse them, in order to give them to uh, students uh, in Greece that uh, we are, don't have uh, the necessary equipment to uh, have a computer at home. Uh, we are actually we are also running uh, some uh, projects with uh, some municipalities in Greece in order to create some open labs. Open labs will be uh, a fabrication labs uh, with uh, uh, open hardware, a 3D printer, uh, uh, etc. In order to um, uh, make um, technology available to uh, out to communities outside of Athens, of course. To from uh, for the model we have two and we are setting a third one is in the island of Syros one in Athens and we are trying to make it uh, now in Crete and uh, uh, into Mykonos Island. A uh, few things about the open technologies uh, in education competition. Uh, our idea it was uh, it was started uh, four years ago and uh, what we were trying to introduce uh, to education community uh, to free open soft software and uh, hardware. And encourage uh, cooperative design and development of open educational uh, technology projects. Project, and of course uh, to Okay, uh, the Codenicate project was a project that uh, have already talked about that. So the about, about uh, uh, youth refugees and the Greek uh, uh, teens in order to uh, work together and uh, study open to study with uh, open technologies. Uh, Another our project we are running is so it's so say open code and uh, we are supporting the education of open educational resources. We try to uh, raise awareness about uh, open code and uh, use of open educational content. Uh, we are trying to mobilize the academic and research community towards producing open educational content and spread it to the more areas of education. Uh, Ilarle Lack is uh, one of uh, our projects that uh, try to make use of the reuse of open educational recordings. It's a Moodle based uh, platform with uh, educational material uh, from uh, 30 by 35 courses available to everyone. Uh, there are uh, currently we are, loving, uh, we are on two courses the LibreOffice uh, course uh, and the web design and open uh, with open source. Uh, we are members of our SAD with a member of Creative Commons. Uh, we are uh, trying to promote open data and open government uh, through uh, international partnerships with promotion of open data, open standards, and open government in Greece, with the uh, organizes data for and hackathons on open data transparency, and uh, different uh, workshops on the benefits of open data for um, uh, small uh, and medium enterprises. Actually, we are advoc advocates of privacy and digital rights in Greece. Uh, we have a, a very active working group. We are uh, doing workshops uh, to journalists for cryptography and secure communication. We are uh, running campaigns for whistleblowers protection and policy, about transparency, uh, campaign and workshops about the Freedom Information Act uh, 
which public authorities have to oblige to publish a certain information about the activities. We are a, a data, it was a member of my data org Greek chapter, and to have a dedicated blog about the disseminated information campaigns on digital rights and privacy. That's a few things about us, uh, a very quick uh, introduction about the DFOS. Uh, sorry, stop this. Uh, okay, that's a very few introductions. So I can talk about a few things about uh, our e learning platform. That's uh, uh, just a to I said. Okay, I hope that you already seen it. Uh, yes, this. seeing it perfectly. Thank you. Okay, great. Just um, moment. maybe uh, because we are have had now such a long time uh, of presentation, maybe there are first questions in the audience uh, addressing the yeah, first part, uh, and then we can move on to the e-learning. Yeah, um, great. Is there already are there already any questions or uh, shall we? Proceed. Maybe give them a second. Otherwise, we will have a bigger uh, question and answer part in the end. The audience also says in the chat, proceed. So let's dig into the e-learning. Costas, we can still can't hear you. Uh, please unmute yourself uh, on Zoom. Uh, it's in the uh, lower yeah. part. Yes, okay. perfect, okay, perfect. Thank you. So, uh, what is uh, e learn uh, like GR? E learn uh, learn GR is an online uh, platform based on, on the open source uh, learning managers uh, system Moodle. And it has a name to provide educational resources, uh, open educational resources, and topics related to open source technologies uh, in courses that we have already organized online in person or online. Uh, we have uh, actually in the eLearn uh, uh, platform, we have uh, about uh, 35 uh, lessons uh, already available. 23 lessons are in Greek and, 20, and 12 uh, lessons uh, are in English. Uh, some topics, uh, we are covering topics about uh, op popular open source applications like LibreOffice. We are covering topics about Linux desktop and Linux administrator, open source hardware like Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and uh, 3D printing program language about uh, like Python, uh, but web design and web creation with open source tools, uh, instructions and uh, introduction to how to use and uh, publish open data in open data platforms like uh, DECAN and CICAN. We have an introduction to open source educational resources and some uh, courses about uh, popular content, open content platforms like Wikipedia, opposite map, how to add an article to Wikipedia, how to edit uh, uh, opposite map and so on. Uh, just uh, share a little bit more the platform. Just to find. Okay, you share. Yes. So actually, e-learning it's uh, it's not about uh, only provided uh, PDFs and uh, PowerPoint presentation or just some notes uh, uh, to to the student or the people, but it's about uh, adding. Um, a content that will be more appealing to students in order to um, to learn more and to play with uh, uh, with uh, the educational material. So uh, I will uh, showing uh, for the sake of presentation one of the uh, on on the courses which is in English in order to um, to see it. It's uh, about a LibreOffice. LibreOffice is a popular open source. Uh, um, uh, word and uh, um, data um, plat uh, sorry platform in uh, so we are doing this uh, po very popular course in Greece in Greek and uh, also in English so to have a lot of uh, uh, international interest about it and uh, this uh, we can also you can see there are uh, topics about uh, uh, in, in, except from the content there are topics with are quizzes there are assignments there are forums and which all where the students can ask questions, uh, ask, uh, learn about uh, the topics, uh, learn some, uh, uh, have some quizzes and uh, assignments in order to be graded by the tutors and so on. Uh, that's uh, actually the content, it's uh, interactive. 
So they have some quizzes uh, in order to just sort of a quiz for the example. So example, that quiz, oh yeah. Okay, with uh, some quizzes that uh, they are solving and, uh, uh, and so on. And uh, some uh, and, uh, assignments that uh, are uh, already graded by their uh, uh, by the tutors or the teachers. Uh, for this LibreOffice course, we are connected about uh, two and a half years with more than a thousand uh, students, uh, registered students to attend it. Uh, it's a it's a big course, so not of all the students are finally uh, managed to finish all the um, all the assignments. Uh, but about 300 students already uh, finished the, pro the 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 course, and we are going to run it uh, for a, a lot of uh, this year uh, during the October November uh, during the November and December uh, period. Uh, that's a, that's a few things about uh, eLearn. Uh, about they learn. Uh, so if you have any questions about uh, all this, uh, what GFOS does and uh, what uh, is e-learning and all this stuff, I'm, I'm happy to answer, the, to answer to you. Thank you so much, um, Costas, for this very broad input. Um, we've been waiting for this and uh, I'm really stunned uh, by the, uh, the e-learning platform. Uh, I would start off with some questions which we have uh, thought of uh, during this call and also beforehand. And then I would say whenever our participants would like to join in, just write it into the chat or on Facebook or on the website. Um, I think for the first question I would have is, um, what is the state of art of e-learning in Greece? And um, the platform you've just presented, um, what role does it play? Maybe also it changed through Corona. Um, I think in Germany, for sure, yeah. we had rapid. Uh, a lot of things changed through the coronavirus. And uh, actually, the, in the Greek educational system, there was already some uh, e-learning platforms available with the open source, the Greek, Greek school network, which is, uh, 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 it's, which is, uh, we support uh, primary and secondary education, have already have uh, some uh, uh, Moodle and uh, another open source uh, platform which is called uh, eClass in order to provide to to give them to the teachers to uh, make some uh, open uh, some content to the students the Greek universities have also some uh, online uh, some um, e-learning content uh, uh, through uh, mainly the open source eClass platform but uh, they are used to just to give notes and presentation to to the students where the students uh, just go to the platform and download uh, our notes for today's uh, for the day, today's lecture. So when Corona came, uh, although we have uh, some platforms available, uh, they were not uh, uh, actually uh, had the capabilities to uh, to host uh, thousands of students and thousands of thousands of, uh, uh, of universities uh, students. So actually e-learning was used only through um, delivering content, notes and presentation, and all the lessons are doing through uh, teleconference applications. Since uh, the teleconference applications, uh, they were not open source, but because that for the reason that uh, uh, although we have some uh, open source, uh, a lot of open source teleconference application available, you have to host it by yourself. So the scalability and, um, uh, and uh, uh, resources that are needed to host a thousand of students uh, are not available to any European country. So most of the universities are uh, turning for help to the big uh, tech companies like uh, WebEx, uh, like Zoom, like, uh, and so on, so on, in order to make all the live uh, teleconference with the students. Uh, a lot of universities now, they are preparing this year, have already uh, uh, switched to Moodle, uh, to, to Moodle with its open source and try right now to uh, be prepared for the next uh, possible uh, um, uh, lockdown. And so the uh, big universities like uh, the Aristotle, Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, National Technical University in Athens, uh, University of Aegean, and uh, Polytechnic University in Crete, uh, and uh, Aegean University have already using, uh, try to use Moodle in order to make all the um, courses available uh, to the students. 
Uh, so Corona was uh, um, the reason that uh, a lot of universities uh, are the now are uh, seeing e-learn as a uh, integral part of the teaching process. Of course, there are all the open universities that uh, were the distance learning universities have already done that. So uh, we, this one are cooperating with the Greek Ministry of Education in order to uh, educate uh, the teachers of the primary and secondary education to how to use uh, learning platforms and how to add content. And so yeah, this e-learning Corona was a breakthrough through for the e-learning in general, not only in Greece, in, in everywhere, I think. Amazing. Um, so uh, yeah, the so the e-learn like our platform it was actually was uh, used as an example in order for in order for many universities to see how a Moodle uh, delivers content, how Moodle can you create course uh, create a course for it uh, in order to test it to see if it's okay for them. Not it's okay for them, and so to learn about Moodle and how to create a course in Moodle, so we have a lot of some lessons to for content creators in Moodle, and of course uh, during the Corona was uh, a lot of people uh, used the free time to learn uh, things that uh, have no time to learn uh, in different ways. Amazing, yeah. So it was a, playing your platform played actually a vital role in digitization during COVID for the universities. Um, we have already our first questions from the audience. Um, they want to know uh, how many people slash students are using the e-learning platform on average? Um, and they also asked if it's, you answered this a lot a bit already when you said it, it was also like an international benchmark, uh, if the platform is already used outside of Greece yet. Uh, as it refers to our learning uh, uh, platform, we are uh, it, it's uh, used about uh, two or three hundred people every day. Uh, for as it for its international international appeal, actually, it, since it's the, the some courses are open available as a content uh, uh, to everyone uh, through Google searches and uh, search engines are available as uh, help pages actually for. Uh, uh, to learn about something. For example, if you search uh, how to insert uh, a, a table in uh, LibreOffice, uh, you can uh, find uh, an article from eLearn, uh, our platform, in order to see how to uh, insert a table in uh, LibreOffice, and so on. Amazing. Um, there, there's another uh, question which came in from Facebook. Someone wants to know, um, in Germany, there, there have been a huge uh, discussion, there has been a huge discussion on uh, data privacy and protection uh, when it comes to e-learning, spe specifically in school, which was also, uh, yeah, there was a broad debate on whether it is uh, more advisable to uh, yeah, pro use proprietary software that is easily accessible, or if schools should wait until there are safe solutions. Uh, very similar discussions in Greece regarding data privacy and uh, e-learning? And if so, uh, how did you handle these issues? Yes, there was this discussion also in Greece and uh, actually the use, that's the reason that uh, we are promoting the use of open source and self-hosted self solutions like a Moodle that to every school or every university can host uh, uh, the, its content and its uh, teleconference platform, which may be either big blue button or teaching mint uh, inside the, the university on the school, than to share uh, all this content and uh, all this um, uh, data to an unknown data center in uh, somewhere in Europe, on uh, in uh, the States or in Africa or in Asia, and uh, to unknown person. Yes, it's uh, the same uh, um, discussion here in Greece. We have. Uh, we think that uh, hosting uh, educational content and uh, student faces uh, through uh, platforms that uh, are not uh, uh, other the um, Greek or the European uh, laws so should be done, it should not be done and uh, try to uh, promote self-hosted uh, solutions that are, that are uh, hosted inside the Greek educational or the European educational system or inside the, the schools and universities. Amazing. That's a big, um, uh, that's a big discussion in Europe, like now, not uh, not about uh, uh, privacy, but the privacy of uh, all the hosted solutions that are now to through the big tech giants like Amazon, Google, and uh, uh, Azure. 
that uh, all the governments and um, uh, in Europe or the European Union they are uh, trying to get out of this uh, um, cloud uh, hosting services that are not inside the European Union because uh, uh, there are a lot of privacy issues about uh, how our data are used uh, uh, if it does not uh, belong to us and belong somewhere else. For sure. Um, yeah, it's it's a huge debate ongoing, I think, all over the world. Um, related to that debate, uh, you, you have a, the term of openness is like, I would say, uh, the the one that you're using the most to describe the work at GFOS, that you're fostering openness. Uh, what's the role of openness uh, as a concept? First, what is this concept? And secondly, uh, which role does it play in this debate on data privacy and also uh, ownership of your with digital uh, track record. Yeah, openness actually means uh, that all the knowledge, code, and data are publicly available to anyone to share it, use it, reshare it, build no new knowledge about them, uh, upon them, and without uh, the need to start uh, from the beginning, actually sharing uh, something that uh, either it's a, a code, it's a computer code or for a program, or it's, uh, it's uh, open educational resources or an article or an idea or a research that's important through the COVID situation in the corona. Uh, there was a huge debate about uh, how the, um, the vaccines and all the knowledge from the bakery pharmaceutical companies would be available to everybody in order to reuse uh, all this information in order to uh, the vaccines and the research we are available to third world countries. Uh, so openness is all of this about uh, these things that uh, to open uh, all the knowledge to everyone in order to use it and reuse it without uh, copyright materials. Copyright is okay, it's uh, um, the copyright uh, it, uh, on knowledge, copyright on knowledge cannot be done because knowledge has to be shared. So it's openness so, so for all this about it. And how does this openness relate to, we just talked about uh, also the dangers which come with uh, proprietary software when it's hosted overseas, where you kind of lose control of your data. Is openness a concept which also, uh, yeah, fosters privacy? Or is this fosters, a different level? Fosters, yeah, yeah, fosters privacy is in there. Uh, you are, it's a open source, uh, it's a open, uh, the code and uh, all the hosting solutions are publicly available in order to see them examine test it to see if your code before or your uh, if your code or your uh, personal data is uh, exposed to to anyone it's um, it's a um, it's a technology that uh, can help uh, businesses uh, educational institutional countries to achieve their independence uh, from uh, a software vendor that, uh, or a cloud vendor that uh, hosts their data and uh, to somewhere else than uh, its own country or its own business. Uh, it's about enabling innovation, uh, sharing your code and sharing your knowledge uh, to anyone. It um, gives uh, the others opportunity to create new businesses, new ideas, new, new code, new, new knowledge. Um. Is this in Germany? There's a huge debate on uh, whether to use proprietary solutions or open source solutions. Is this debate we're just talking about more on the academia side yet, or has it already like reached the broad uh, digital users in Greece? Like, um, is it something that's like a huge, huge point of discussion in the moment beyond the sphere of your academic institutions? Yeah, there is a lot of discussion actually. Uh, either on uh, primary and secondary education, that uh, uh, due to the recent economic crisis in Greece, uh, the, while there is a need to buy software, not just use open source software, which is uh, freely available and is better in order to teach the students to learn how to do things uh, openly. Um, there is also the huge uh, discussion about uh, how government spends uh, the taxpayer money on um, platforms. Uh, and uh, solutions that are not on open source. Since uh, both in Europe and uh, in Greece, uh, uh, all the publicly, all this, uh, the, the software that uh, is built from government and public sector are funded through taxpayers' money. So if something is uh, funded for us, why would not be available for us 
to be examined and use it on other, just pay a company to millions of the euros to develop a software that will be available only uh, for the for the one uh, organization uh, on uh, one ministry and not available to other ministries. And uh, if the company uh, if the company decides that not to, to close or to have uh, uh, to leave from Europe, uh, you lose the software and you use, use all the support. That's the problem with. Uh, um, Proprietary versus open source software, and uh, I think and European Union and the many governments now are considering uh, switching uh, to at least some of their uh, infrastructure to open source software in order not to be uh, locked in uh, in vendors that uh, cannot be uh, cannot be changed or um, be free from them. It's super interesting because. We have a very similar discussion on this, I would say, um, the tech I would give this would be public money, public code. If the government pays for technological innovation with taxpayers' money, then uh, there is in Germany also a huge debate about uh, the openness of the technologies which are developed with the taxpayers' money. Um, since you, if you foster innovation and the code is pro, uh, like private for the company, it, it opens up a huge debate on uh, distribution of these funds. Um, we had the prime example in Germany with the Corona app uh, to warn others, which was uh, based on public code. And uh, I really, uh, it's really interesting to see that there are similar debates uh, all over Europe, apparently. Um, we have another question from our community. Uh, and it's asked, um, we've seen like kind of a, like a fuel digitization, we also call this tur turbo digitization of the civil society particularly. So there were many civil society organizations which we're used to work face to face, and I would say, in in means of digitization, the civil society uh, nonprofit organizations were uh, not so developed before the crisis. And during the Corona crisis, it has ele elevated their level of digitization, uh, yeah, very quickly. Uh, is there a similar effect in the Greek civil society, or are they still? Uh, more working face to face. Do you have any experiences in that regard? Yeah, I have. A, we actually, we have a, many of us uh, learn to use uh, more than uh, six or seven uh, teleconference platforms. <laughs> now we have uh, a lot of choice of that. Yes, a lot of uh, civil society organizations now using uh, uh, tools, uh, online tools, in order to uh, work and to meet uh, together. Uh, we are uh, during the last uh, year of through the Corona crisis. Actually, we came. Uh, we we actually uh, see and uh, discuss with a lot more civil organization than before. So it will be easier to discuss and uh, see uh, each other uh, what's uh, it's going on uh, through all this crisis. And uh, yeah, actually, Corona and uh, online um, meetings make some uh, things much more easier than before uh, in order to, but okay, no, we cannot uh, actually replace uh, human uh, one to one interaction, but it was, uh, and uh, this, uh, this kind of digitization helps, helped a lot more for, uh, for collaborating between each other. We just uh, talked about, uh, yeah, new ways of working together and that we suddenly had to learn uh, to find our way in the digital sphere, even if we were not used to this before or working in this area. Um, you, Costas, you work in the area of open technology for quite a while. Um, do you have a favorite tool? Um, we are particularly, we were asked from our community if you have a, a favorite video uh, software tool like Jitsi. Um, but maybe you have, in general, since this platform we are talking on today, the Plötzlich Digital Sprechstunde, is mostly about tools. So maybe you have also some, uh, yeah, open source uh, yeah, of course, of course. diamonds Actually, for us. <laughs> every day we are using uh, a matrix uh, uh, element and uh, Gigi for uh, our work and collaboration with uh, uh, to, 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 the, to the people that work for GeForce are, 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 are working distantly from a distance. So yeah, Gigi, Matrix, and Element are the three inseparable tools for everyday communication with each other. It's we're using at the next cloud for uh, online collaboration. I think uh, Jitsi is, uh, is 
very well known. Nextcloud we use as well. But the other one, uh, Matrix and Element, maybe you can say a word about no, these tools. Matrix is the protocol that uh, uh, for actually it's like Slack. Uh, like uh, oh yeah, it's, uh, which uh, and uh, element is an application that uh, builds on the matrix protocol in order to collaborate with. So we create rooms, we can create uh, public spaces, we create one to one uh, talk, and uh, we can incorporate a GZ to element and matrix in order to talk and uh, to chat and uh, also video conference one year with another. Amazing. So it's something similar uh, to Slack, but on the open source side. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. I personally uh, learned about this platform just today. Um, and when it comes to uh, video conferencing, your go-to tool is Jitsi, uh, as I understand. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Jitsi yeah. and also if, so if it's uh, through Moodle, through our learning platform, is Big Blue Button. Which uh, Big Blue Button, uh, it's better from uh, sharing. Uh, has some teachers uh, tools that uh, the teachers can use in order to present and uh, uh, collaborate with the student for the course. So okay. it's mainly teaching and through blue button if it's uh, on online course. Okay, and all over the open source world, do you have a favorite open source tool besides D three? Something that you use maybe also to personally organize something. Uh, that we should maybe also invite for the next episode to this <laughs> platform. Yeah, actually, no, no, it's a, it's a Libra Office or a Collabora Office uh, through the next cloud. It's one of uh, the everyday users that we are using uh, together. And so, okay, it's standard by our mail client in order to, <laughs> to exchange mail with uh, to the HN world. Well, thank you so much, Costas. Um, I think we're slowly but surely approaching to the end. The, of this episode. Um, if there are any more questions, please ask me in the chat. Um, otherwise, we would uh, call this uh, yeah, call this episode soon. Um, since uh, we don't really know what the weather is doing in Athens in the moment, I look outside and uh, it's getting grayer and grayer. We are still expecting uh, yeah, some uh, some heavy rains. Uh, so um, we have to also pack our stuff soon and return to our uh, yeah main location. Uh, but we have a last question from our audience. Um, wh what's your opinion on Zoom, Costas? Uh, is it an evil tool? We are on Zoom, so it might be a bit uh, funny to talk about this in a moment. <laughs> like, but yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, maybe that's a good last Actually, take. Actually, Zoom has uh, a lot of privacy issues in the beginning, uh, but now it's trying to solve it, I think. Okay, it's, an, it's not an open source tool, it's a properly related tool, uh, but has a, okay, it's a, okay, we can, it's a tool. <laughs> we can talk about open source and use this tool, so it's not so evil. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Costas. If you have anything uh, that you would, uh, do you have anything that you would like to share with us before, uh, yeah, for the next episodes? I want to, would like first of all to thank you to for uh, in order to 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 have the opportunity to talk with you and all the, to the um, attendance now and um, uh, at any time you like we have make make a more detailed uh, presentation about our uh, initiatives. Thank you so much, Costas. Yeah, I think for us at Platzi Hatchpistone, it was super interesting. First, we learned about new tools of collaboration. We will definitely have a look. Uh, at element and matrix um, and for sure it is uh, always interesting to exchange thoughts all over Europe and what I found most interesting today was that there are many debates which are going on in Germany apparently are not limited to the national sphere but are moving all over Europe particularly the debate in Greece and I, I was I can just say thank you Costa thank you GeForce for your time and for uh, also the uh, the willingness to to join us on this experiment of a live format. Um, it is also our first time to have such an open discussion on this uh, yeah plötzlich digital die Sprechstunde format. Um, I can just advise you to uh, come by next time. Um, we will start over uh, with our classic format on the 29th of October. Um, with an episode about Ether and CryptPad. Uh, then you will see me again on the panel to, together with Johannes Grunecker from ABO. Um, and I'm really glad that 
some of you made it today uh, to our very special episode. And if you have any, any further questions, uh, please let us know. Um, I think that's it for today. Costas, please stay a minute on the call. And I say thank you and see you next time. Thank you.